You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by MissArtastic.com. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MissArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MissArtastic.com now. about exploring the elements of art with kids, lessons, activities, and ideas. Art is not just uh, a fun activity for kids. It's also an important tool for their cognitive, emotional, and social development. One of the key aspects for teaching art to children is introducing them to the seven elements of art, which are line, shape, color, texture, value, space, and form. These elements of art provide the foundation for all of artistic expression and understanding them is essential for creating and appreciating art. We're going to be talking about and exploring various lesson ideas, activities, Um, and just general ideas for teaching the elements of art to kids. So whether you are a teacher, um, maybe you're a parent or a caregiver, this guide is ultimately going to give you practical and creative ways to engage children in the world of art. From your hands-on activities to integrating art into other subjects, we're going to be covering everything you need to know to help children really just explore and develop their artistic skills. So we're going to dive in and discover the exciting world of art with kids. So we're going to squid before we begin getting really into the nitty gritty of it, we're going to just talk about the definitions of the elements of art. So the elements of art are the foundational components that are used to create works of art. These are the seven basic elements. Um, And there are, again, seven of them. And so there's line, like we said, shape, color, texture, value, space, and form. Each element plays a crucial role in artistic expression and understanding them is essential for creating and appreciating art. So we're going to begin off with line. And line is a mark made on a surface with a pointed tool, such as a pencil or brush. Lines can vary in width. Um, in length, in direction, um, and they can also um, range in quality, right? And what I like to use them for is just like using them to convey emotion and movement and other visual visual elements in a piece of art. Next is shape. So shape really refers to the physical form of an object or a figure in an artwork. Shape can be geometric such as squares and circles and triangles, but it also can be uh, organic, such as leaves, such as bugs, such as clouds. So basically those ones are more things that we find in nature versus things that are more man-made. Next is color, and color is a visual sensation that is produced when light strikes the retina of the eye. And artists really use color to convey uh, mood and emotion and atmosphere in their artworks. Texture refers to the surface quality of an object, either real or implied, and texture can be rough or smooth, bumpy or even shiny. Value is the lightness and darkness of a color or tone, and artists use um, value to really create contrast, depth, and form in their artworks. Space refers to the area around and between um, and within even the objects themselves in an artwork. And artists really use these use space to create perspective, depth, and the illusion of three-dimensional form. And speaking of form, form refers to the three-dimensional aspect of an object, such as its height, width, and depth. And artists use form to create the illusion of depth and volume in their artworks. So we're going to cover some lesson ideas for teaching the elements of art to kids. 
Number one is line drawing exploration. So you can really have your students explore line drawing techniques using a variety of tools, such as pencils and pens and markers. They can create a create different uh, types of lines, such as thick and thin, wavy and straight, and really experiment with shading and cross hatching. And you can really encourage them to create a line drawing based on a theme or a subject of their choice. Next is number two, a shape collage. You can provide students with a variety of materials such as colored paper, scissors and glue, and I love using magazines or newspapers. And then you can really have them just cut out and arrange shapes into a, to create really a collage um, artwork that emphasizes the use of shapes. So the focus is of this art project just exploring shapes. Um, and they can experiment with color combinations, so maybe like only shapes using a warm color scheme or a neutral color scheme, cool color scheme, um, analogous color scheme, whatever it is. Um, they can experiment with color combinations and layering to create dynamic and visually interesting compositions. Your third idea, so if you are following along, remember I have these show notes on my blog, so you can check it out there. A uh, link will be just below, um, if, whether this is the podcast version on your, on your player, um, or if it's on the YouTube video, you can check it out there. Um, funny news, or just grab a pen and paper, and we are on to lesson idea number three. So if you're planning, these are some great ideas to incorporate into your future art projects. If you are like, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, number three, color wheel exploration. So teach students about the color wheel. Got one, got one. Um, I also have color theory art resources in my Teachers Pay Teachers story. You can check out the link below in the video. Um, or if I search for Mr. Tastic on TPT, um, if you go to Elements of Art, there are tons of units there and resources, uh, even a full art unit on just teaching the element of color. So if you're looking for some color wheel or color theory ideas or templates for color wheels, you can find some there. Um, but you can basically provide teachings about color wheels and how colors interact with each other on them and like specifically like what the purpose is of it uh, versus you know you got your warm colors your cool colors you got your primary and secondary colors and then how those also create the tertiary colors you can cover all kinds of things using that I think it's a really good place to start but basically provide them with a blank color wheel template and have them fill in the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. And I encourage you to only let them use, if they're older, primary colors um, and white and black to mix everything so that they really understand the whole idea of color theory, that those primary colors and white and black can make anything you need. Um, they can also experiment with color mixing using paint or markers to create new hues and shades. Number four is texture rubbing. So you can have students explore the concept of texture by creating texture rubbings. So provide them with a variety of materials such as leaves and bark and texture paper and have them place the object under a piece of paper and rub a crayon or pencil over it to create a textured effect. I also like to use graphite sticks for this. So I could, you could take a big piece of paper, you go side into the world or around the schoolyard and take your graphite sticks on their side and then do a big texture rubbing that way to do very big samplings. I think that's very nice, especially in the older grades. Uh, next, number five, is value scale drawing. So you can teach students about the concept of value by having them create a value scale. There is a free value scale template in the Misertastic TPT store. If you just go to Misertastic on Teachers Pay Teachers and just type in free in the search bar on my store, it'll come up or you type in value scale. There's even uh, units on the element of our value if you're interested in that. But basically, provide them with a blank scale and then have them fill in, in with shades ranging from dark to light. And they can experiment with different shading techniques to create a sense of depth and contrast. Number six is positive and negative space drawings. So you can teach your students about the concept of positive and negative space by having them create a drawing that emphasizes both. So provide them with a blank template and then have them draw an object or a subject in the positive space and then fill in the negative space with a contrasting color or pattern. And finally, number seven is to allow them to explore a 3D form sculpture. So teach students about the concept of form by having them create a 3D sculpture. So provide them with a variety of materials such as clay and wire and cardboard, and then have them create a sculpture that emphasizes the use of form and volume and encourages them to experiment with different shapes and sizes. 
So these lesson ideas are just really a starting point and can be adapted to fit the needs and interests of your students. Encourage them to experiment with the elements of art and explore the create explore their creativity through these fun and engaging activities. Remember, if you're needing some more ideas, make sure you head on over to Ms. Artastic on TPT. Just go to teacherspayteacher.com, search in the search bar, Ms. Artastic, that's M-S, Artastic, links also in the description below this video or podcast uh, audio uh, description. And then if you look on the left side of my store, there is a whole bunch of different categories. Uh, you can just click the elements of art section and all my elements of art units are in resources and worksheets and handouts and task cards and everything you want for the elements of art, it's all going to be there. So make sure you check it out. That way your planning is done in literally seconds and you don't need to worry about this. All right, next one is activities for explore, exploring the elements of art. So there's many fun and engaging activities that help children explore and understand the elements of art. So here are some ideas. One is drawing contour lines. So you can have students choose an object and then draw contour lines of the object, paying close attention to shapes and lines they see. This activity can ultimately help students understand the elements of the line. Number two is collage making. So you could ask students to create a different uh, a collage, basically using different mediums and materials, such as magazine clippings. Um, I'm a huge fabric scrap collector, especially if you work at a school that has like textiles class or uh, sewing, you can ask the teacher to keep the ends or the clippings, you know, like when they cut off and have those little itty bits, ask them to put it aside and then you can go and collect it from them. Uh, and then you have a bunch of stuff for collage. So awesome. Uh, construction paper is great for this, newspaper, all those kinds of things. And these activities can really help students understand the elements of art texture. Number three is color wheel creation. So you can have students create their own color wheel by mixing primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow, to make your secondary colors, which are orange, green, and purple. And this activity can really help students understand the elements of our color. Number four is clay sculpting. So you can ask students to create a sculpture using clay, whether it's ceramics or if it's air dry clay, um, whatever you have available to you, use what you got. Um, this activity can really help students understand the element of art form. I think that's really great. Uh, number five is pattern design. So you can have students create their own unique patterns using different shapes, lines, and color. This activity can help students understand the element of art pattern, perfect for your littles. All right, number six is still life paintings. So it was an upper, up, you know, an upper grade one, but you could probably explore it and just see what happens with some of the elementary students. Like, I think it's just more about the process than the finished project, right? So like learning how to observe. So you can set up a still life scene and ask students to paint it. This activity can really help students understand the element, um, element of composition. And number seven, finally, ask students to create a scene using paper cutouts. This is all about paper cutouts, guys. So the activity can really help students understand the element of art space. So by engaging these activities, uh, children can really gain a deeper understanding of the elements of art and then how they can be used to create visually appealing artworks. So we're gonna cover some ideas now for integrating the elements of art into other subject areas. So the elements of art can be integrated into other subjects to make things a little bit more cross-curricular or have some cross-curricular connections um, and really enhance students' understanding um, of both art and the subject being studied. So here are some ideas for integrating the elements of art in other areas. Now, if you've kind of gotten a little distracted by your phone or whatever's going on around you, make sure you come back to me, have that paper ready, and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cover now some integration ideas. All right, so first one is math. So you can use the elements of our shape to also not only teach geometry set um, concepts, you can also have students identify and draw different shapes found in their environment. Number two is science. So you could use the elements of our texture to teach about different types of rocks or animal skin, and then have students create texture rubbings uh, to compare and contrast uh, different textures. Number three is language arts. So you can use the elements of art line to teach about different types of lines used in writing and have students identify and draw different types of lines found in letters and writing. 
Number four is social studies. So you can use the elements of art color to teach about different cultures and their use of color in art. So cool, right? So we can have students research and create their own artwork inspired by a specific culture's use of color. <sighs> Love it. Number five is music. So use the elements of our uh, uh, principal design rhythm really uh, to teach about different types of music and then have students create an artwork that represents their rith the rhythm and beat of a specific song. Oh, I love it. Um, and then you can even maybe integrate like line to help explore that rhythm, right? All right, so lesson plan ideas for teaching the elements of art. So we're gonna just talk about how you might go about structuring this in your classroom. If you're like, okay, I'm so ready to get going on this. I wanna dive in on teaching the elements of art. I need some like structure. So here are your lesson plan ideas. So first is the introduction. Your first lesson I would start with is the introduction to the elements of art. So start with like an overview of your seven elements of art, your line, shape, your form, space, texture, value, and color. And then you're gonna introduce each of the elements through a short lecture or presentation and provide examples for each. Um, my units in my TBT store totally start off with this. So if you're looking for something that's pre-done and pre-fab, it's all right, I'm, I got you, I already made your video. Guys, that's what I do, check it out. All right, Mr. Tastic TPT. And then after that, so provide examples for each of them or give a short lecture yourself. You, you're a teacher, you got this, my friend. Um, and then you're gonna have your students create a visual representation of each element using different materials, such as markers, paint, or colored pencils. Now you can either make these like little, like a full exploration, or you can make a mini art, like maybe on a post-it note or um, cue card, right? Or you could chop up with some paper into like, you know, Four pieces or you could take having you know make a template on a piece of paper and then divide it up into sections and then there's little samplings where they explore each of the elements of art that way so you can really make it as big or as small as you would like so number two is te uh, texture collage so for this activity provides students with a variety of textured materials just as your sandpaper and fabric and tissue paper and then you're gonna have them cut out different shapes and sizes from the materials and arrange them on a piece of paper to create a textured collage. Number three is color bills. So you can teach students about primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, and then have them create a color wheel using paint or markers. So they can also mix their colors to create new hues um, and identify complementary colors. Number four is shape scavenger hunt. Take students on a shape scavenger hunt around the school or outside. Have them identify and sketch different shapes uh, that they that they find, such as circles and squares and triangles, they can create a larger composition using the shapes they have found. Number five is value scale. So you can teach students about value by creating a grayscale using different shades of gray. Have them create a value scale using pencil or paint, gradually transitioning from light to dark. They can then apply this knowledge in shading uh, two shading in a drawing or painting. Number six is form sculpture. So you can provide students with a variety of materials such as clay, paper, or wire to create a 3D form sculpture. And you can encourage them to think about how the form can be viewed from different angles and how light and shadow can affect its appearance. Number seven is space landscape. So you can teach students about positive and negative space and then have them create a landscape using both the positive and negative space. They can then cut out different shapes from paper and arrange them on the background to create the illusion of space. So some resources for teaching the elements of art. Uh, there are many resources available to help teachers and parents teach the elements of art to children. So here are some of the best resources online. So number one is online resources. There are many websites and blogs dedicated to teaching art art such as the Artful Parent and MizArtastic.com. These sites offer lesson plans, activity ideas, and tips for teaching the elements of art to kids. Now number two are art books. There are countless art, sorry, countless books on uh, art theory and practice that are perfect for teaching the elements of art to children. Some great examples include, and this is nothing, this is not promotion, none of these are paid promotions. Um, or any of that, they're not affiliate links, nothing, 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 nothing. But number one is the 
Usborne or Osborne uh, complete book of art ideas. Number two is the art book for children. And number three is art lab for kids. Number three, art supplies. So our, art supplies are essential for teaching arts to children. Um, just really, I keep it basic, like oil pastels, watercolor paints, your wax crayons, or colored pencils, depending on the, um, or pencil crayons, like I how, how I call them. <laughs> we call them pencil crayons in Ryan, but you might call them colored pencils. Uh, same thing. Um, but, um, or wax crayons, right? So those are interchangeable depending on the age of the kids. Markers paint, right? Paper can go a long way. Just I'll keep it just those basics. But it can go a long way in helping kids explore the elements of art. Number four is museums and art centers. And then basically just taking kids to museums and art centers is a wonderful way to expose them to different types of life art. Um, and really, really help them understand the elements of art. Many museums uh, offer virtual tours or in-person tours and educational programs specifically designed for children. But also again, like if you cannot attend in person, like for example, I'm not going to go to the Met because I live like across the whole continent <laughs> from there. So I'm not, for example, I'm not gonna go there on a regular basis. It's not, it's not feasible, uh, but I can go online and there's lots of online resources and virtual tours so I can check out things that way as well. Number five is online videos. So online video resources such as those on YouTube can really be a great resource for teaching the elements of art to kids. Many artists and educators post their videos even in progress videos. Like I have my own artist YouTube channel which is Kathleen McGivern. That's my just my artist channel, not my Mizartastic channel. So that's me and I'm just posting videos of me creating art and talking about my process. But lots of artists do that and I would highly encourage you to check that out. And lots of educators post different demonstrations for different art techniques. Um, and you can also just, just subscribe to the Mizartastic YouTube channel for some free art lesson ideas and tutorials. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. It would really be helpful if you subscribe. I would appreciate that. That's how you can support this artist for free. Number six is other teachers. So finally, don't forget to network with other art teachers and educators in your community. They may have great ideas and resources for teaching the elements of art to kids. So if you are wanting some fully, uh, some find some art units that are like totally fully planned, explore the elements of art, and then through the lens of a theme, then you can find my fully planned art units. I have made them great specific. They are exclusive to the Misertastic TBT store. And then, um, so for example, I have a kindergarten elements of art unit, grade one elements of art unit, grade two, grade three, all the way up to grade eight. So you can find your grade specific elements of art unit there, exclusive to the Misertastic TPT store. The links are in the show notes on my blog, or you can just go to Misertastic on teacherspayteachers.com, search Misertastic on Teachers Pay Teachers, and then click elements of art in the categories section on the left side of my store, um, or just scroll through the pages and you'll find them. So cool, guys, I love them. All right, so that's it for this episode, but basically teaching the elements of art to children really is an important aspect of their education. Not only does it help them develop important art skills, but also encourages creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving skills. So with the right resources, lesson plans, and activities, it's easy to teach the elements of art to children and to help them a develop their lifelong love of art creativity. So whether you're a parent, teacher, or caregiver, there are plenty of resources available to you to help you get started and make our education fun and engaging for all ages. Well, that's it for this episode and I'll see you in the next.